now move on to the uh, item which uh, is a communication by myself as, as, as president. Um, can I start by saying that uh, this session marks one year since the Congress adopted a comprehensive reform package back in October 2010 and entered into the implementation stage of our reform process. And within what is the broader reform of the Council of Europe as a whole. I think one year is, is a good yardstick to make a first assessment of the progress which we have made. We have set out to refocus our work on achieving more comprehensive and higher quality monitoring of local and regional democracy and our observation of local and regional elections, and particularly to better follow up on our recommendations. We've introduced the local and regional dimension of human rights as a new priority for the Congress, and we have decided to refocus our thematic activities on key challenges faced by local and regional authorities. And we've stressed the need for stronger and more permanent dialogue with our national governments, but also with our institutional partners in achieving these objectives as well. To succeed in this mission, we have adapted our structures and working methods, strengthened the political role of the Congress Bureau to spearhead our action, We've set up three new committees to give it more practical substance and established the statutory forum to act on behalf of the Congress and that held its first meeting in uh, June. In other words, our approach has become more operational, more practical, more concrete and, and better results orientated. And today I, I'm pleased to re report the first successes of this approach. I think we've uh, made good progress. Our monitoring activities to ensure the implementation of the European Charter of uh, Local Self-Government have been strengthened in accordance with the rules of procedure for uh, monitoring and adopted as part of our reform package. Uh, and they are expanding. Since my communication at the 20th session in March, the Congress has fielded missions to France to complete our very first monitoring of this country, as well as to uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Lithuania, the Czech Republic, Moldova, and two visits to Germany. Just after the session, our delegates will visit uh, Italy, Portugal, the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, and a further visit to Moldova and to Bosnia and Herzegovina. Over the same period, we have observed local elections in Albania in May and in Moldova in June. And under the rules of procedure for election observations, which are also as a result of the reform, all observation missions are now preceded by pre-election visits. In addition, we've carried out an assessment mission in September to examine the electronic voting procedure, which was tested in 10 Norwegian municipalities. Monitoring has allowed us to enter into more substantial and more targeted dialogue with authorities in the country concerned. And we can see the first results of these efforts. Our monitoring report on Austria has a triggered debate about federalism in that country. And in June, the Austrian Parliament made decisions that were a direct implementation of three concrete Congress recommendations. Also, as a result of our monitoring, the Estonian government has renewed its dialogue with local authorities. And Slovenia, I'm very pleased to say, has ratified the additional protocol to the self-government charter on citizen participation. We have also pursued our efforts to convince member states to lift their reservations regarding the charter. 
which is indispensable for a unified European space of common standards for local democracy. As a first result, Malta has lifted its reservations on four paragraphs of this treaty. At the same time, I, we, well, we have been advancing, and I've particularly been advancing, our ways and assessments of the way and degree that the Charter has been incorporated into domestic law and legal systems of member states, with a report on this subject, which is included in our session's agenda this week. In May, I have the opportunity to address the ministerial session of the Committee of Ministers in Istanbul, where I stressed on your behalf the need for better partnership and joint action between national governments and local and regional authorities in our areas of common concern. On the same occasion, the Congress Bureau welcomed the fact that strengthening local and regional democracy was one of the priorities of the Ukrainian chairmanship. And I am very pleased to say that areas of such possible joint action have been identified and included in the report which will be discussed at the Conference of Ministers responsible for local regional government in Kiev in November. Another important activity, colleagues, was the very recent visit of a Congress delegation to meet Mrs. Leila Guven, the Mayor of Virense, and a Congress member, one of our Congress members, who remains incarcerated in Diyarbakir, in Turkey. And she has been in that position for almost two years now. The case of Mrs. Guven was raised during the last session in March and also in our statutory forum in June. In July, I made a statement stress, stress, stressing absolutely that the continued detention of hundreds of elected representatives in Turkey, including Mrs. Guven, remained a cause of grave concern for the Congress. It is debilitating for the democratic process when such a significant number of elected representatives are prevented from exercising their mandates and that their seats remain vacant for such long periods of time. Today I am pleased to say that our efforts to visit Mrs. Guven and to establish a dialogue with her have succeeded. And I support the statement made by the delegation at the end of the visit. Now, colleagues, let's be clear. Without interfering with the judicial Turkish procedures, we will certainly pursue this dialogue further. Indeed, the Bureau of the Congress decided yesterday to make the information note on this visit publicly available in the light of the important recommendations made in the document, and those have been fully endorsed by the Bureau, and you will find that document, CG 2121, at the Document Distribution Centre. At the end of my communication to you, colleagues, I will ask both Mr Knapper and Mr Verbeck, who were our delegation on the visit, to briefly report on that visit itself. Colleagues, we have also made advances in our approach to promote human rights and raise human rights awareness at the grassroots level. This approach, based on increased responsibilities of local and regional authorities for human rights implementation, has been supported on many occasions by the Council of Europe's Commissioner for Human Rights, Mr Thomas Hammenberg, and it was taken also on board by the European Union's Fundamental Rights Agency, with which we have been cooperating very closely on this issue. Our position was also positively received in discussion with the Committee of Ministers Group of Rapporteurs on Human Rights, and during this session we'll be debating a new report under this priority on raising human rights awareness amongst local and regional elected representatives. 
As for key challenges faced by local and regional authorities, the Congress proposals made to the group of eminent persons have been largely integrated into the group's report on living together, combining diversity and freedom in the 21st century Europe, published in May. This report has inspired the special theme of this session and its recommendations on greater citizen participation, better local integration and cohesion, more effective protection of citizens' rights, and stronger intercultural dialogue and interaction are already reflected in many of our Congress's reports that are being prepared. Some of them will be debated during this session on citizen participation, on education for democratic citizenship, and on the situation of the Roma in Europe. And in this regard, I would like to stress in particular our action this year with regards to the rights and dignity of Roma. This session also marks one year since the adoption of the Strasbourg Declaration on Roma by the high-level meeting of Member States' representatives on the 20th of October last year. The Congress responded to the need to mobilise local and regional action in favour of the Roma by organising a summit of mayors on Roma. And as I said earlier, that took place in Strasbourg on the 22nd of September. This summit brought together almost 400 participants, one of our largest ever gatherings, and they pledged their commitment to pursue their activities at the grassroots and took a very concrete decision to establish a European alliance of citizens and regions for Roma inclusion. And to back up this initiative, our thematic rapporteur on Roma and Travellers has prepared a report on the situation of Roma, and Mr Warmersham will present that uh, during the debate tomorrow. To conclude, I would like to stress that the Congress is now on the right path to be towards becoming more operational and more concrete. The momentum of the reform has been kept up and strengthened further, and our reform efforts are now beginning to show successful results. To summarise, colleagues, we are moving forward. And thank you very much for your attention to my report.